I'm Ron Becker and um, I designed this building and uh, I did not do that by myself. I did that with loads of colleagues and the team grew and grew. There are millions of conversations that made this building and actually communication is what sets us as people apart from the animal kingdom. We are the ones that can talk to each other and through history we've made places, special places, for people to communicate. It feels to me that with an, an additional amount of information, additional amount of communication that we are all um, part of these days, we, we have the opportunity to add a layer of richness to cities and buildings. And I think this happened in this building and I think it's a wonderful thing and there's a huge future for it. I was born in Arnhem and my mother used to walk me in Park Sonsbeek and Park Sonsbeek, of course, is a wonderful sort of almost natural place that touches the very centre of Arnhem. Aldo van Eyck, in my mind, the most intelligent and the most sensitive architect I have ever been in, totally inspired by. And the biggest thing for me is that he managed to um, put a layer of interest and information on top of each other and it all sort of turned, overlapped beautifully and turned into this beautiful building and the, the pavilion is almost a place that anything could happen in really but the space, the roof makes this place where something might happen. Very exciting. Now I was um, uh, reminded of a lecture he gave in 1987 and thank God to modern technology we can now watch this still on YouTube and you should Google it. It was a, a lecture he gave in Delft in 1987. He said some incredibly important things. One is if you want to draw a circle and he's perhaps the actor with most circular buildings. I don't take a compass. Um, I, if you use a compass, there's a point in the middle of the circle. And once you have a point, it sets up a place for a, a cross to appear. And the cross might turn and turn this circle into a bunch of triangles and falls apart. And the triangles are probably in their spirit the most removed from the spirit of the circle. It's the wrong way to do it. So if I have to draw a circle, I'll go to the kitchen, I'll find a cup or a saucer or something that I can use to describe only the outside of the circle. So if you look at a ring, there is no point in the middle. There is nothing in the middle of a ring. If you have a disc, there's just the outside and space in the middle. And the realization that this space in the middle is so full of possibilities, of options, of future, then that is for me you know, if you boil down architecture, that is for me architecture, making spaces that have potential and promise, and it's a wonderful thing to do. So I moved to London, I met these people, um, I was a partner at Cohen, Pedersen Fox, we worked um, in all over Europe um, and started PLP Architecture six years ago. We did loads of buildings, Hoftour in, uh, in The Hague, this wonderful building in La Défense in Paris, the Heron Tower. These are office buildings, but they all have a story behind them that have to do with the way people meet and the way people talk to each other. These are not usually part of the brief. The brief, the program that the architect gets on for day one says, uh, make 25,000 square meters of office space, make sure people can escape from the fire escape. It's all of these things, it needs to be efficient. But once you start laying out, as we did in the Provincie House in South Holland, the office space around an urban plaza that was connecting the building to the city of The Hague. We placed the exits to the different parts of the building to the centre and this centre became a heart and that wasn't what we intended to do but it sort of happened like that and when the building was built people started using this space. Um, if they went from one department to the other within the building they would cross it, they would meet each other. When the weather is nice people sit outside, they bring their work, they have meetings, why sit inside if we can sit under a tree? It really became almost like a, a square. The space was used for big celebrations. This is Queen Beatrix opening the project. The space still is used very much in the way we did not intend it to be used. It's fantastic if buildings turn out like that. We are building at the moment for the UK Cancer Trust and it's Europe's largest biomedical laboratory. It's 100,000 square meters of, uh, of small labs full of scientists developing all sorts of new things in the, in the field of biomedics. What they figured out years ago is that each large advance in biomedical research can be traced back to a, a meeting between two people that didn't know each other whose fields slightly overlapped. And it's in this little overlap that ideas came that then later turned out to be big advances in biomedical research. So making places for these things to happen, having symposia, meetings like this, 
um, making space within buildings, but people could meet each other and have place to do that is crucial for the functioning of businesses in the world. Now, if you talk to the Microsofts and the Googles, they know this. They, they create workspaces that are really for, um, they're like hotel lounges, you know, people hang around. It seems like they have no work to do, but in fact, that, that is where the work is and nurturing these ideas, these little ideas, making sure that they can go somewhere is what makes um, companies um, successful these days. So here we are in this building. In fact, you are there, right in the tippy top. If you'd look out of the window without these screens, you'd see all the little church towers in Amsterdam. You'd see the Docklands behind the screen. It's very energy friendly. It's a building that opens itself to the north, closes off to the south. Sunlight is bad, daylight is good. And if you calculate um, electricity and uh, energy use in a building, that's how the building is designed. But the floor plate, in effect, is a very, very efficient, well-working, two and a half thousand square meter floor plate that can be used in a large variety of functions. And just like Provincia House, it has its circulation pointing at the space in the middle. In fact, this happens on more levels in the building. It keeps going um, on the first, second, third, fourth floor, the bridges on the sixth and the ninth floor. There are uh, circulation places connected to the central space of the, this building and it becomes its heart. So we now have a place that is uh, as you can see, when the building is used active at all times of the day on 3D levels, it's a 3D plaza, it goes up into the sky. It's a wonderful thing. Now, the technology, which plays a huge part in the way all these people are connected. Just imagine this fellow who comes to work in the morning and the arm barrier to the car park goes open by itself because it reads his number plate. He um, comes from his client, it's 11 o'clock, the building is full of people. He um, has to decide what kind of work he needs to do, right? So he picks a space, the building helps him pick a space that is suitable for the work he wants to do. He wants to have a telephone conversation for an hour. The building says, well, you can go there. That one's free on the sixth floor, go sit there. It makes his workplace almost perfect from the moment he walks into the building because it's suited for his task. He comes there, the, um, he gets his desk, the temperature will have dropped by four degrees because the building knows he likes it cold. Uh, the lighting levels will have dropped because he's got to work on his emails. Everything in this building is connected and everything is kind of helping people understand how this building functions. And the building generates an enormous amount of data and we're only really starting to figure out how we can use this data. And I love talking to your, your data analytics people because they are trying to figure out how they can use this data to create better work groups. What kind of people are best suited to work in a group together? What are the dynamics? And all this, all this information will help uh, create a better workplace. So somehow in this building, this, the, the network is adding a layer of interest and of intelligence to the way we communicate with each other. When the first lift was built in a building in 1857, it meant one Otis lift going to five floors of shopping space. First time you could go to the fifth floor to go shopping. That's a huge change in the way we look at cities because 75 years later, we built the Empire State Building. It has 73 lifts. It gets you up to the 102nd floor. The, the problem with this is that if you walk into the Empire State Building, there are 38 lifts on the ground floor. The whole of the ground floor is a little strip of space. The building is mostly made of lifts. It's a problem. So now that we're going making buildings in, in the cities in, in Asia and the Middle East, dense cities, we make buildings of a 500 meters tall, they're really difficult. They flap a bit in the top. You really don't want all the weight of the building in the middle in these lift cores. So we, we did this study to see what would happen if we think of these lifts in a different way. Maybe there are small trains that run up the building around the perimeter and there are six or seven tracks and each of these tracks has 10 or 12 of these little pods that go around that have only 10 people. And they are part of a system that is connected to people's lives and to the public transport system in the city through people's smartphones. So the timetable gets adjusted 10 times a second to make sure the train is there at the right time, at the right place. When you come, we can make buildings of a kilometer high in this way because they have the weight on the outside. If you come to the building in the morning through your smartphone, the building knows that you want to go to the 78th floor to get your cup of coffee. And after that, you want to go to the 125th floor because you have a meeting with Mr. Such and Such. So the building can be incredibly efficient in the way of moving people around. And it gives us an opportunity to make buildings that are almost like vertical cities. 
They're well-organized transport systems that will create opportunities to make our cities even more dense, but also, in a way, more livable and more workable. There are worries, of course. If uh, I have a son who's 15, and like every parent of kids of that age, we worry that the kids are addicted to screens and they, uh, they cannot uh, do anything without looking at a screen. In fact, my son talks to 50 people every day. He has groups of people that deal with football, groups that deal with Nike shoes, groups that deal with music. He has groups that he discusses these issues with day to day and he communicates so much more than I did when I was 15 and it's uh, there are opportunities there I'm not so scared of this new world so back to this building and when we take this photograph I often think of it as something that is quite um, warm at the base of the building of course we pick these colors to make an atmosphere around the atrium and uh, the rest of the atrium is filled with daylight but in fact it almost reminds us of this image of the cowboys where you have this warmth that people sit around and uh, the blue evening skies beyond it um, I am entirely excited about this uh, this idea of adding a layer to, uh, to the cities that makes our spaces richer and our experience of cities more livable and more workable. Thank you. <laughs>